All right, so this is going to be a video on how to basically replace these butterfly keys on the Mac keyboard if you happen to break the clips. So normally, if you look at this, let me see if I can even get close enough for you guys to see this properly, okay? So normally what you have here, if you look at this um, hinge, you see the two little um, things here. Sorry, I know that purple stuff, that's from me eating cherries and it wouldn't wash off. But anyways, you got these um, little plastic things sticking out. Um, if you notice, there's a little nub here that's like broken off. So there's actually supposed to be plastic there, there, and on these two other sides. So how that works is this clear plastic piece, um, it has these little areas here that hold those into place. Um, and the customer just ripped the thing out. Um, I actually have another video showing how to properly remove the, uh, the keys without damaging them. So if you want, you can watch that video. I'll actually um, show you on another keyboard. I don't want to mess with this one because there is a slight risk you can damage it. But um, usually if you follow my method, it's going to be okay. Um, so let's go ahead and get a replacement keyboard. Okay. Um, you can either get replacement keyboard or if you can find replacement keys with this clear piece, um, then you can do that. There's some places that will actually um, sell the entire the entire thing like that. Okay, so let me find a keyboard that has like almost all the key, like a bunch of keys missing. Okay, so, oh, this one, someone also broke like that. I don't know if both shift keys are the same, so let's go ahead and see if we have another... Technically, like all these butterfly key keyboards are the same, if I'm not mistaken. There are a few where they'll have, um, what do you call, they'll, they'll have a little bit of a difference where um, they'll have like a membrane underneath, but for the most part, the, the butterfly keyboards are about the same, I think. Um, but if you can find one as close as possible, um, that's probably your best bet. Oops, ow, I dropped that on myself. <laughs> Okay. Oh, anyways, let's go ahead and see what we've got. Sorry, I'm spending all this time just looking for a good keyboard to show you guys. Um, okay, so I guess we'll use this one because this one, I think, as far as I know, is broken, but um, it has all the keys on it. So what we're going to do, first thing is we want to safely pull off the key, okay? And the way you do this it's best if you have fingernails. Right now, I cut my fingernails um, a bit too short for this. You can see the length of my fingernails. Um, to me, that's a little bit too short, okay? Um, but anyways, what you do is you get in here, okay? And if your fingernails are too short, um, then you might have to use a little plastic pry tool, but fingernails work best, okay? So what you do is, as you can see, my fingernail is underneath here, and I'm kind of lifting this up. So you kind of work your way down the side, and I don't know if you heard that, but it clicked. I'll do the same thing on this side, and I won't say anything so you can hear it. Actually, it didn't click. <laughs> so let's keep trying. We're gonna try with two fingers here. There you go. All right, same thing going over here. Pull that, like that. All right, so there we go. We got the four clips that we're holding at the top out. Then we can kind of wiggle this and you can see it pops out. Most of the keys actually pop out somewhat similar, but if you wanna see, I have a video where I actually show how to remove all the keys. Um, this is the one that I just pulled out, and this is the original um, that they had. If you look at it really close up, um, they actually cracked their key a little bit here. Hmm. Actually, it, it, I mean, it, it has a crack mark in it, but it, it's not affected in any way, so that should be fine. But as you can see, you have these um, little clips at the top there, okay? Same thing with the one I have. Um, I don't know if you can tell, Let's see if I hold them side by side. Okay, so I think the clips actually look okay on, on theirs. The only thing is they have a um, crack in the plastic. Actually, this one has a different kind of line or something there. So I don't know. This is just a not too good design. <laughs> actually, that's just dirt. Okay, so I'll probably give them a new key just to be safe. All right, and here you can see the old hinge and the new one. Um, and this one actually, oh no, this kind has the rubber membrane. So that's not going to be fun. That means I'm going to have to tear this rubber membrane out to get this um, hinge out. Okay, let's first uh, go ahead and remove the old one. So we have the old keyboard here, okay? And what you need is, um, well, you can use whatever works for you, but I use this really thin 
metal tool, all right? It's flexible. It's not like a sharp knife or anything, okay? It's not sharp. And then you just have to get underneath this and pry this up. So you want to be very careful that you're only prying up the clear part, okay? This clear thing. There's also some adhesive there holding it in, but as you can see, we can peel this up, okay? And then you want to be careful here because those are the lights. It's that little white crumb. Is that a crumb? Or hopefully it's not some actual components there. But okay, so we got part of that up. And these little black circles there, right next to this button here. So those little black circles um, are actually uh, holding it down into the keyboard. So I'm going to actually show you guys a trick. We're actually not going to remove this unless we absolutely have to. Okay, so as you saw, we're able to lift this up slightly. Okay, we're going to do the same thing. Actually, we're going to try doing it with just one side. We might have to do both. Let me see here. Um, yeah, we might have to do both, but we'll, we'll see. If we have to do both, we have to do both. If not, we'll try and do it without doing both. Okay, so we got that side up. Let's go ahead and get the other keyboard. And now we got to basically get this white hinge out. Um, but this is the newer design where they put this rubber thing and it didn't solve the issue they were trying to solve. Um, but anyways, what we have to do is we have to pry up this clear piece, all right? But we don't want to damage the this this hinge piece. So that's the tricky part because as you can see, it's really hard to get in there, okay? So what we're gonna try and do, let's, um, hmm, how can I do this? This is, yeah, this is the tricky part. So, if I get in there, especially with this, I mean, I might end up just ripping this, I'm gonna just rip this rubber membrane out because the membrane isn't going to be, I mean, it's not going this keyboard's not gonna be reused. So let's go ahead and I'm just gonna tear this membrane out. Also, if you're wondering, um, you, you can actually tear this rubber membrane out on your Mac. It's not gonna really do anything. I mean, the typing will feel different, um, a little bit different, but I mean, at least your keyboard will work and you're not gonna have to replace the entire thing. Because if you go the other route, you're gonna have to for sure replace the entire thing, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and get under here with a tool. So I'm just going in the center of that clear piece and let's see if I can lift this up. This isn't the right tool for this. So let me actually get like a really small flathead screwdriver and I'll be back. All right, I'm back. So I got a small flathead screwdriver. This is a 1.5, whatever works. We'll see, let's see if this works. Hopefully it's thin enough that I can actually get underneath here and pry that up. Okay, if not, I can also, I can always use the smaller one. Actually, I'm going to use the smallest one. So this is a 1.0. And get in between under here and see if we can lift this up. Oh no, this is being a pain. Technically, if we destroy this clear thing, it's not a problem because the other one is still intact. But uh, you kind of want to, just in case you need it later, try and keep it intact. Yeah, this thing really doesn't want to come out. Okay, I got a, oh, nope. Come on. So we got to get underneath here. There we go. And there we go. So we lifted that up. Okay, so now that we lifted that up, you can see this one has the extra peg here and here. All right, and that's what we want. So let's go ahead and lift this hinge out if we can. Okay, so what we do, we slide, we're sliding it over to one side. All right, so we slid it over and let's see if, are those pegs clearing? Oh yeah, okay. So those pegs cleared the clear plastic piece, cleared the clear clear. All right, so there we go. You can go ahead and push this back down, not that we're gonna use that. Okay, and we'll set this aside. Okay, let me stack this stuff back up. Sorry, guys. Okay, now you want to be very careful with this because you don't you don't want to um, damage the hinge that we just uh, recovered from the other MacBook. Okay, so now what we're going to do, we just have to get this back in. Again, remember, we lifted this side up. All right, so what we're going to do, we're going to get this, slide it all the way into here, okay, into the Z area. Then once you get that in there, we're going to slide that back over here. And those two little pegs, the one right here and the one right here for the clear part should go underneath the clear 
piece. So now if you have that in and you try and lift from here, it will kind of stay in place, okay? Next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna lift this clear piece slightly higher. So make sure to hold this as far over this way so that it's staying in place and not popping out, okay? Then what we're gonna do, we're gonna lift the clear one up, lift it back up, come on, okay? And then now that it cleared those two pegs, you can put this thing back on top and push that into place. Okay, so there we go. And hopefully now that's holding down. Okay, you wanna make sure that it sticks well. There are those two little black, these are adhesive, okay? And that's what holds this, this hinge in place. Um, technically, I could have put this one back in, I guess. Um, oh, actually, no, I can't because that one has the broken plastic. So we were recovering this. Sorry, I'm confusing myself. All right, and then we're gonna use the new shift key as well. And the way you put this back is you put the bottom in first, okay? And then you just click this back in. And there you go. We have a repaired shift key. All right, their, um, their battery is out of charge, so I'm gonna have to let it charge. But uh, basically, that's all you gotta do. Um, I actually have uh, a video where I show how to pop off each individual key, but I don't show how to do the clear piece. Um, the clear piece is essentially the same or very similar to this. On so In some cases, like the shift key is nice because you can leave the um, thing in place uh, because it has the little um, plastic pieces that are mounted in the center um, and then adhesive on the outside. But on some of these, you don't have that option. Um, so if I actually... Um, show you the other keyboard. Let me actually pull the other keyboard back out again. I'll show you what those look like. Okay, I think I have one where I removed a bunch of keys but left the clear part. So let's see here if I can show you that. Here we go. Okay, so like let's say on this key here, okay, you can see they have um, these melted plastic pieces down here, okay, and then you have the adhesive kind of up here. But the problem with this kind um, I'll actually remove one just to show you. Um, I've actually also done the space bar on one. Uh, actually someone broke this one, but you can peel this completely off, like the whole clear piece, and it will come out with this button, and you can put a new one on with the, with the hinges in place. Um, so I'll kind of demonstrate that with this key. Um, but yeah, other than that, that's pretty much all there is to this. So let me see if I can pop this out to show you guys. So again, I'm using the very small uh, flathead screwdriver. This is a zero. Oh, actually, there's there's the plastic dimples in all four corners. So here, 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 and here. Okay. So anyways, we're going to try with the flathead screwdriver to pull this out. Okay. And I've actually had to replace some keys like this for some people, but I didn't make a video back then. Okay. So once you get underneath the clear piece, you can kind of like work your way under, hopefully. Okay. And then when you get in there, you can see it pop that out. Okay. The only thing with this is that the key is going to sound all clicky clicky extra. All right. So click that out. All right. And the reason is because this film is now no longer held as uh, firmly in place. Okay. So we're going to pop out the other corner up here. Okay. Again, we're just popping out the corners of those plastic things. So let me actually rotate it this way. Actually, if you, you can hear it right now, you see how, how that sounds versus if I go to this one, where'd it go here? Okay, versus this one. See how quiet that is? And then this one. All right, so you're gonna kind of have that sound. If you're okay with that, then you can go ahead and do this. Otherwise, you're gonna have to uh, replace the entire keyboard, which is not worth the extra cost. All right, in most cases. So we're gonna work our way over here and pop this corner out if we can. It is a little tricky. It was a little kind of tough to get these out. Okay, so now we got that. Let's go ahead and work our way to the final one. And you wanna be careful with those little white um, parts that stick out underneath, okay? So there we go, we got all four out. Okay, so here you can see the. this is the little piece that um, basically shorts the little connector down here. So when you press the button, what happens is it touches these four pieces out here and then it touches that with the center piece and that makes like a short in between and that's what registers the key press. So that's what the key looks like and then here you can see what the 
hinge mechanism underneath looks like. Okay, you can see there's four of those little nubs that stick out on each side. And the two outer ones are the important ones. Those are the ones that are held under here. I don't think the, the letter keys, I don't think they actually use the center ones for anything. So I don't know why they have those center ones. Maybe it's just to keep it um, in, in place in the center here. Okay. But anyways, let's go ahead and put this back so you can kind of see. So then you just put the little hinge back into place. Hopefully you can see the lighting is a little bit weird. All right, there you go. And then once you get that, make sure to line up the four little pegs that stick out with the little divots in this clear thing, right? Make sure you have this facing the right way. You can see they put this black tape here. And the reason they did that is because the LED is here. And if they don't have that tape, it's all going to shine like directly through here and it'll be way bright on this side. So what they do is they put this tape to make the light just spread down here evenly. All right. And here you can see on the back what that looks like. They put like a white thing there. Okay. All right. So we're just going to drop this back into place. And for demonstration purposes, I'm going to transfer one of the other letter keys over. So right now it's not in. You want to push down those four corners and try and get those to kind of seat completely into place. Okay. It will probably just pop out a bit. Um, but again, this is not like a perfect repair. It's more like a workaround to make it where you don't have to replace the whole keyboard. So it might pop out a lot easier. Keep that in mind. So if that happens, then you might have to um, manually fix it. Um, another thing you could do, if you're very careful, you can put a tiny bit of like super glue in those little holes and then you can put it back. But um, yeah, I, I wouldn't do that because then it'll make it like way more difficult to take out. All right. So anyways, we're going to get the G key out. And just like before, you start from the top of the key, okay? Just like this. Come on, get under there. My fingernails are too short right now. Okay, and then you go under the corner. I don't know if you heard that pop. Then we're gonna work our way around to the other corner. Let's use my other fingernail. Oops, let me use my other fingernail here. If it doesn't pop, you wanna use two, and there you go. Okay, I'm going to click that back in so you can see. Oh, and there you go. You hear that click. All right. Again, you can do this like a lot of times. And if you're doing it right, the way I'm showing, you don't really pry too far. Just barely get under the key. You can see we can just keep popping this in and out, in and out, over, over and over. You, can, you see? Pop that in and pop that out because some people are telling me like, oh, you're showing people like how to break their keyboards. But if you do it right, you see, I can do it like a bunch of times. Unless you're just constantly ripping your keys out over and over, you should be okay. All right. I had one customer where they rearranged their whole keyboard, but they didn't know how to pop them out and they screwed up all the like hinges and everything underneath. But here you can see, again, the way these keyboard keys work, um, so I'm going to teach you how to know how to pry up keyboard keys because this will go for every single model computer. The important thing is knowing which side has these claws. Okay. So these are shaped. These are shaped like this. So what happens is these little pegs that stick out will go in and lock like this. And that's what those do. All right. If you look at the key at the bottom here. Okay. So at the bottom, it's more like, um, I don't know. It's just like a flat piece. So basically the thing hooks in. So you, you, this is why you put the bottom first because you slide the, the little thing in there and you don't want to try and yank it out from there because then that will just break that piece off. So it's important that you pry it up from the side that has the little claws like this. So it can lock like that. And every keyboard design is different. So don't expect the, the mechanism with the claws to always be at the top. Sometimes they'll put it on the side. Sometimes they'll put it at the bottom and sometimes they'll do other weird things. So keep that in mind. Also some keys they'll put like little metal things that hold it in place. Um, so that's very important. Um, I want to teach people how to look at things and understand why you have to do things the way you have to do it. You can't just rip this out, um, like from wherever. Okay. So this is the key that we just pulled out. This is the one that we just removed the whole hinge and put it back. So let me show you what it uh, feels like or sounds like. Okay, so we put the bottom in first again, make sure it's in place and then click that in. And here you see, okay, can you hear that? 
versus this, versus this, back to this. You can hear the difference. There's also a, a different feeling to it. And also, if we try and pop this out, it's probably going to pop the whole hinge up. But let me see. All right, let's go ahead and try it. And here you can see it popped the, the whole hinge thing out. Oh, wait, am I getting a call? Give me a second. Oh, no, okay. All right, so as you can see, it pops the whole thing out. So to get this back out, again, you find the top of the key because that's where the claws are. And then instead, you get your fingernail under here and pop the hinge out. So you get your fingernail in the hinge and work your way over like that, all right? And once you get those two claws unlatched, you see you can pop this whole thing out. And then you can go ahead and put this thing back into the place where you want it, okay? So that's the only thing when you break these off, when you pull these up like that, you have to put it back like this, okay? You can't put it back the other way um, because it will just fall out. Again, the other option you can try, you can try putting some super glue on there. Maybe that will work. But uh, you want to be very careful because if you get the super glue in the thing, in the circuit underneath, then you're going to screw up your keyboard. So that's why I don't use super glue and I just leave it that way. All right, then we can go ahead and put the G key back here. And here you can see it sounds normal. Okay, these sound the same. If I pop this back out. Okay. All right, pop that back out again. Pop this back into here. Hear how it's a little bit more clacky, but it's okay. It As long as it works, it's a good fix. All right, good cheap fix compared to replacing the entire keyboard. All right, so we're gonna get this piece back out again one more time just to show you guys because again, people keep bothering me saying that I'm teaching people how to destroy their keyboards. But uh, I mean, it's this versus going somewhere, having your entire keyboard replaced for several hundred dollars. All right, which would you prefer? I think you can get these keys for, uh, I don't know, I haven't checked recently, but I'm assuming under $20. So $20 versus hundreds of dollars, what, what would you rather do? I mean, you get a new keyboard and a new battery and a new trackpad if they replace the entire palm rest assembly thing. But um, yeah, I mean, if, if all that's wrong with your computer is the that key is popping out. Oh, and one other thing, you wanna make sure that even when you press here, your key works because if this doesn't work, then ripping this out and putting a new one isn't going to solve the problem. You can check underneath and see if the circuit is screwed up, but very rarely will the damage be right underneath the button. It'll usually be like all over the place somewhere else. So keep that in mind if you're replacing these keys. Hopefully this video helped you guys out. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next one. All right, let's drop this bite.